to offer Craig Summerfield. He is Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce Director of Environmental and Energy Policy. Uh, prior to joining WMC, Craig spent nearly 15 years working in the Wisconsin State Legislature, formerly for Senator Lemahue, who has joined us today also, um, including time as a policy advisor in the Assembly Speaker's Office and a Chief of Staff in the State Senate. Craig serves as the WMC representative of the Wisconsin DNR's Air Management Study Group, Drinking Water and Groundwater Study Group, and Brownfields Study Group. Please welcome Craig. Thank you. Uh, my name is Craig Summerfield, Director of Environmental and Energy Policy. I uh, already talked about my uh, background. I serve as WMC's representative for the Air Management Study Group, uh, Drinking Water and Groundwater Study Group, and the Brownfield Study Group. Uh, the first two do meet on a quarterly basis, and we actually had an interesting meeting in the uh, uh, Air Management uh, Group, which I will talk about uh, um, a little bit later. And uh, also, uh, Again, served in the legislature for about uh, 15 years. Was happy to serve as Senator Lemahue's chief of staff for about uh, five years. So uh, appreciate uh, uh, seeing him here today to correct me on anything that uh, I might uh, I might get wrong today. Um, and one of the reasons I just want to talk about my back my background is in uh, political science, and I also have a, a master's in business. But I'm not uh, just to be clear. I'm not an environmental compliance uh, officer. Uh, I'm not going to be able to offer great suggestions on. Uh, um, what kind of uh, emissions, you know, what kind of uh, uh, retrofit needs to go in a smokestack for uh, emissions testing. Uh, my background is in, uh, is in legislation and, uh, um, and, and rules management, so, um, so that, that's going to be the focus of, uh, of my remarks today. So I wanted to hit uh, three items. Um, first, I, I do want to talk a little bit about, uh, about Highway 23, not obviously directly related to my, uh, to my environmental role, but a uh, couple of things. One, uh, had a chance to drive up uh, 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 151 over to 23 today, and let me tell you, it was really enjoyable to be able, once we got to that Sheboygan County line, to finally drive on a, uh, a four-lane uh, uh, four highway there. Um, and real, I mean, just <laughs> after I know, uh, I believe uh, folks in this room, some had been waiting for 40, 50 years for, for, that, uh, for that expansion to finally uh, be completed, and it uh, looks like, you know, uh, knock on wood, you're just uh, uh, approaching the, the finish line there, so that's, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, other reason I have that on there is that uh, there was the uh, biannual report uh, issued by the Department of Transportation, that's the Transportation uh, Projects uh, Commission uh, uh, report, and that will talk a little bit more about um, uh, the costs that have been incurred so far and uh, um, what's expected moving forward, and I thought it was a uh, so I happened to pull that this week, pretty positive report, and I'll just highlight a couple items on that. So that's the first point. Uh, main reason I, I wanted to chat with you today, and I, again, appreciate the invite from the Sheboygan Chamber, is talk a little bit about ozone non-attainment. Um, certainly a lot of challenges uh, facing Sheboygan County on that. Uh, most recently with uh, an EPA decision made last summer to actually expand, again, the boundaries in relation to the 2015 ozone non-attainment standard. So I'll talk a little bit about the history of that, then talk about what happened with that, uh, with that EPA decision, and then what steps, uh, if any, can be taken uh, moving forward in relation to non-attainment, because this is something very important to the uh, business community. Um, and then last, uh, I do want to talk about uh, PFAS. Um, if, uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, um, there's a lot going on in the state and federal level in relation to, relation to regulation on PFAS. And uh, if you think it doesn't affect you, particularly if you're a manufacturer, I, I, uh, I urge you to consider that, that, it, that these regulations could have an impact on you. So I'll wrap up uh, with that. Um, and again, just you know, looking to provide uh, timely information on the topics I mentioned and uh, help uh, folks understand how these uh, regulatory changes could impact uh, local businesses and then uh, understand where these various regulations are in the process. So again, uh, so again, Highway, tw uh, Highway 23, and I mentioned that there is a that there is a port report issued on Monday by the uh, Transportation Projects Commission at the Department of Transportation, and they do this they do this on a twice yearly basis. And I just wanted to highlight a, a couple items. And if you can't see in the back, I'll I'll. Uh, uh, highlight what I'm talking about here. 
if you look at uh, um, you know the cost the cost to date, you can see that most of the items have uh, most of the uh, expense has or most most of the costs have been uh, expensed, as well as uh, the other item I wanted to point out was right. Uh, Uh, that number, if you can't see in the back, is 173.4 million. That was the estimated cost in August of 2021, and it's estimated to stay at uh, 173.4 million in uh, uh, as of February of this year. So that's that's encouraging. You know that means it, it appears that it is staying uh, it is staying on estimate. Um, and I also highlighted uh, a couple of the uh, project costs. Design costs have gone up a little bit, but uh, construction costs have, have gone down. I, I find that kind of funny. You know, it, you, you wonder what the Department of Transportation is doing to tweak the numbers, that it just so happens that in one section the costs went slightly up, the other section costs went slightly down, and then you end up with, with, uh, with something where the, where the costs are, are, actually, uh, are, are actually identical. Um, I think that's kind of suspect, but at the end of the day, the, the takeaway is that uh, cost, costs on that issue have not, uh, have not changed at this time. And then uh, um, this, uh, this next chart just kind of highlights cost to complete. And I'll note the right up here, right up there which, where it says uh, encumbered, encumbered or committed, not yet expensed, uh, 26.1, and only 2.2 million remaining in fiscal year 2022 that still needs to be committed and then 0.4 million in, in fiscal year uh, 2023. So, so what does that mean? That means the majority of the money is committed to, uh, to go out the door, and there's a very small amount remaining for the current fiscal year. We're currently in the 2022 fiscal year, and then a little bit in the, uh, um, in the following fiscal year. Um, <clears throat> so nearly all of the project costs, over 98%, has been uh, encumbered, encumbered or committed. Again, I think that's that's positive news coming out of the Department of Transportation. Um, it, to me, it's a, it's another indication that uh, knock on wood, there, there's not going to be any uh, any additional delays with uh, with getting this uh, with getting this project done. Um, I've asked. I remember asking previously, uh, you know, what would be that 0.4 million in 2023, and uh, kind of. Given the understanding that it would be, you know, landscaping uh, uh, stuff along stuff along those lines, not actually impacting the the traffic and the ability of, of four lanes to go uh, to go back and forth between uh, um, between Fond du Lac and, and Sheboygan. So, um, and again, as I think many, if not all, of you know, uh, Highway 23 is scheduled to conclude with uh, the resurfacing of their uh, um, the final the final phase is the resurfacing of the existing lanes. And that's expected to to occur later this year, and the project is expected to be done uh, at uh, by by fall of this year. So, um, with that, I, I can pause. I can pause quick. Uh, and again, this was more of a actually. And I I did want to cite. Uh, um, and this is one reason I wanted to bring this up. Back when I worked for uh, Senator Lemahieu, um, I remember shortly after the decision was issued by uh, Judge Edelman that, uh, that, that blocked the, uh, the four-lane expansion was initially supposed to happen, well, the last time it was supposed to happen back in, uh, back in 2015. I remember getting an email from someone and, and he, from a gentleman, he just kind of raved about, about, the, the block it, about blocking the expansion and, and all the problems with it. <clears throat> and then his request, and then his note was, I'm going to ask my, my grandkids to uh, have my ashes spread along 23, some you know somewhere west of uh, Plymouth, with the hope that one day I, uh, my body will be able to enjoy a, a four-lane uh, four highway between uh, <laughs> between uh, Fond du Lac and uh, uh, and Plymouth. So, um, so I, and again, I just want to say you know I, I keep knocking on wood, but you know uh, real kudos to the uh, to the local to the elected officials in the, in this room to the Sheboygan Chamber. Uh, I know SCEDC also advocated that, advocated for this um, that uh, that this project is is almost almost over the um, over the hump and and uh, and hopefully will you know you'll have a, a four lane highway between uh, between both Fond du Lac and Plymouth and that's obviously important for you know infrastructure but also also safety reducing all those accidents that occurred along those highway along that highway so. Um, again, just want to talk about that a little bit. Any any questions or, or anyone want to jump in on that before um, 
uh, and again, I'm not a highway, I'm not a highway 23 expert uh, anymore. I, ju I just wanted to, or I should say, I wasn't a highway 23 expert, but uh, um, I wanted to highlight this uh, this report since it just came out this week, and I thought it was a nice snapshot of what's going on with uh, the highway 23 expansion. So, um, anything on that? If not, I can move on into uh, the exciting world of ozone non-attainment. <laughs> Deidre, I like your excitement. It's okay to laugh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so moving on to uh, to ozone non-attainment, lots going on in this uh, uh, in this realm um, over the past year plus, uh, past couple years, frankly, and uh, certainly certainly different decisions coming down from the EPA that are of importance and of impact to Sheboygan County. So uh, just a little, just to take a step back, you know, a little ozone non-attainment uh, 101. Uh, under the Clean Air Act, uh, EPA periodically reviews uh, ozone standards. It can keep the existing standards or, uh, or propose new ones. And then the uh, EPA using state data determines if an area is an attainment or non-attainment of upset standards. You know, an area in non-attainment will face stepped up enforcement uh, actions uh, from uh, from the EPA and also the Wisconsin DNR is required to implement or required to submit a state implementation plan to sh to demonstrate to the uh, to the federal EPA how the state will will meet these plans and if again and if the state is unable to demonstrate that that's where that's those stepped up enforcement come into play so so these standards have been uh, adjusted a number of times going back to the own um, Going back all the way to 19, 1971, 79, you can see that they, they gradually go down. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time today talking about the 79 or the 97 standards because they're largely moot. I believe both were actually uh, revoked um, in the early in the early uh, 2000s, um, and we don't and we don't have many concerns over the uh, over the 71 standard uh, as well. <clears throat> folks here that have been following this issue are probably most familiar with the 2008 uh, standard of uh, 0 0.075 parts per million and uh, 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 0 0.070 parts per million for the, for the uh, 2015 standard. And then uh, again, as I noted, uh, non-attainment concerns are primarily focused on those last two. I mentioned at the, at the top of this slide that uh, the, the EPA will periodically re review uh, ozone requirements. In 2020, the uh, the Trump administration did do that, and they uh, and they determined not to make any revision to the uh, 0 .070 standard uh, for parts per million that, that that you see before that. That is something now that the Biden administration has said they are reviewing that decision, not to review, <laughs> not to change the uh, the .070 uh, standard. So, uh, and they have said that they plan to issue a decision on that. By the fall of, uh, excuse me, by the end of uh, of 2023. So I bring that up because even if we dig ourselves out of the uh, the 2015 uh, standard, there could be more problematic standards uh, uh, on the horizon. So just just certainly something to uh, to keep in mind on that. <clears throat> just wanted to go through, and, and this is this is a recent history. Uh, you could definitely go uh, uh, go further on that. Um, again, you had uh, the EPA proposing that 0 .075 standard in 2008, and then all of Sheboygan County was, was uh, designated as non-attainment uh, in, in 2008. And then in 2013, you actually had, uh, that was the initial petition, as I understand it, to, uh, excuse me, DNR petition to the EPA uh, to reduce the size of the, uh, of the ozone boundaries in uh, Sheboygan County. Uh, then obviously you've had that second air quality monitor established at, at Sheboygan Haven. You've obviously got the, the first uh, monitor right along the, the lake shore at Kohler Andre, and then you've got the, uh, the, seven, the second mo monitor more inland at, uh, at Sheboygan Haven. And the Sheboygan Haven monitor is a better reflection of the emissions that actually occur uh, in Sheboygan County as opposed to the uh, Kohler Andre monitor, which, which is primarily out of state emissions. And I'll talk, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, and then uh, uh, this 2018 uh, EPA goes ahead and designates part of Sheboygan County attainment, part of non-attainment, 
relation to the 2015 standard. And then uh, in 2019, the EPA formally split uh, Sheboygan County into two distinct uh, non-attainment areas, inland and, uh, and shoreline, and that they were actually um, responding formally to that 23rd, all the way back to that 2013 petition from Wisconsin DNR. And that, that's where you had the two, you know, you have inland Sheboygan and shoreline Sheboygan County for, uh, for ozone non-attainment. And then finally, and then uh, uh, many of you probably remember this, uh, uh, EPA formally redesignated both inland Sheboygan County and shoreline Sheboygan County as in attainment of the uh, of the 2008 uh, standard. That was a that was a big uh, you know that I remember working uh, as a legislative staffer for Senator Lemahieu at the time, and that you know obviously that was a that was a big step forward um, uh, for the area, and and that was kind of a uh, what what we thought or what I thought was a was a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, moment uh, in, in relation to non-attainment and, and the regulations. But, um, and then uh, again, I, I just want to, this was the, this was the initial quote-unquote final. <laughs> uh, I, I say final because that was, that was the word that was used by the EPA in, in, in 2018. This was the original designation uh, uh, for, uh, for non-attainment in, she in Sheboygan County for the 2015 uh, standard, and you can see how it, it follows along uh, I-43 there, but does jut a little to the west, uh, uh, for further south of that. So that was that was the initial final, but um, you had this uh, you had this outstanding court case. Um, in again, I, I mentioned in 2018, uh, EPA designated attainment all but narrow areas of certain counties, and this included Sheboygan counties along. Uh, uh, Wisconsin's Lake Michigan shoreline, and uh, this designation was challenged by uh, by Clean Wisconsin, the state of Illinois, the city of Chicago, um, and uh, um, and other entities. So, again, you had a situation where the, where the EPA in 2018 they issued this designation. The designation you saw right here, it was challenged in court. It was challenged by multiple parties. Those those uh, court cases were all consolidated, and then. Uh, in 2018, the D.C. Circuit Court remanded, excuse me, that's 2020, uh, the D.C. Circuit Court remanded EPA numerous uh, area designations for the 2015 ozone boundaries. Uh, the court determined that some of these designations were, were arbitrary and capricious. So, so basically required the EPA, hey, you should, you should be re-examining re the, uh, the, the boundaries that you put in place. And again, I apologize, that's, uh, that's 2020, not, uh, not 2018. On, uh, on that move. Now we come to, uh, to 2021. EPA issued new greatly expanded non-attainment boundaries for Wisconsin as well as several other states. And I will show a, um, a map in a moment here that kind of goes through the, uh, the, new, the new revised vastly larger uh, non-attainment boundaries for, uh, uh, for Wisconsin along the, uh, along the lake shore. Um, and I, I also want to make clear there was no opportunity for the DNR or the public to comment. Uh, these, de these designations were final. So typically when, uh, um, when the EPA does this, you know, they'll, they'll propose a designation and then uh, regulated entities as well as the state, as well as the public, uh, have an opportunity to comment and say, you know, hey, that's, th this is why we like that idea. This is why we, this is why we don't like that idea. You know, um, hey, did you consider this? That's not what happened with, uh, with these new boundaries, the, the EPA just said, "Nope, we're responding to a court to a court uh, to a court case. We're going to do this. We're going to do it uh, today. I, th I believe it went into effect approximately two months two months later, and we're going to uh, expand the boundaries ac across uh, uh, across Wisconsin. And then uh, there were expanded boundaries in, in other states as well. And uh, if you don't like that, tough. <laughs> these these are uh, these are the boundaries now." <clears throat> um, and then I also do want to note, without getting into the rationale as to why they, why they did this, I, I want to note that, again, we're talking about 2015 ozone boundaries. Um, so, so the uh, EPA went back and they interpreted data from 2014 to, to 2016 
you know, for example, they're pointing at uh, the Edgewater generating station as a as a key contributor to to emissions, which, uh, as as I understand it, I believe is scheduled to uh, to close it at uh, at the end of this year. Um, so, I mean, I, 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 again, se setting the whole whether or not that's appropriate. I mean, certainly, it's, I think it's very frustrating for the for the business community to to uh, to see this. To see them interpreting data that's that's several years old, not not relying on the most current data, and then really not also offering uh, businesses, uh, the public, or or even the Wisconsin DNR to actually submit comment on that. It was just it was just this this is it, and you're going to have to deal with it. So what what are the new boundaries? The new boundaries are much larger than the old boundaries under the uh, under the 2015 standard. You can see the very narrow uh, uh, pink strip there, which, which again, is, is, still, is still a concern for Sheboygan County businesses and, and, and many others across the state because there's a lot of people in, the, in that narrow strip of land. But you can see the very narrow strip that was initially approved by the EPA uh, for the 2015 boundaries in 2018. And then that green area is, uh, um, is you know, the vastly new uh, 2015 um, ozone boundaries, Kenosha, Milwaukee, Ozaki, Racine, Waukesha, Washington, Sheboygan, obviously, Manitowoc, Door County, including some counties that were not included at all uh, initially under the boundaries were now included in these in the expanded boundaries. And, and again, no, no opportunity for public comment, just, just boom, we're done. Can't really hear it. Boom. I was looking for like a boom, like a, you know. <laughs> maybe if I pointed the mic directly at, at, the, at the podium, maybe that, that would be better for, I could, I could clap, I suppose. Uh, that maybe that would be, that would be more, uh, more effective. But um, again, no opportunity for comment. Manitowoc, uh, Door County, the new boundaries. So I'll, ju I'll just go through here. Kano you know, um, we don't have to spend a lot of time on, on each one of these, but you know, Kenosha County uh, moved west to, uh, to I-94. To I and then look at this one. This is, the, this is southeast Wisconsin. This is, this is considered the Milwaukee area. Um, so uh, Racine, Milwaukee, Waukesha, Washington, Ozaki counties. So look at, so, you know, Ozaki County further west, Washington, that was not even included, now, now finds itself under a 2015 ozone standard. And then you've got Waukesha County there, again, was not included, was initially not included at all. Now nearly the entire county included in the 2015 standard. Milwaukee County, which is just, just part of the northern part of the county, now, now um, all of it. And then also, and we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, soon, but note that Racine County was not initially included in the, uh, or was not included in the 2018 boundary, I should say, um, but then when the EPA revised it in 2021, again, um, now, now it's included. And yes, that does, <laughs> that does matter, and I'll, I'll talk about that. Again, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, Manitowoc County, again, push, pushing, pushing the boundary westward. And then Door County, which was just the narrow area around, uh, um, what is that? Just around Newport, thanks, Mike. Uh, just around, uh, just around Newport, and then uh, um, instead, uh, uh, nearly all of uh, all of Door County. Uh, I, I will, I will say it as a uh, um, as an aside here. After these designations came out, the um, what happened was is that for some of these counties, and I believe uh, in particular Manitowoc and Door, the the latest data actually demonstrated that they were in compliance. So uh, I believe uh, so. Subsequently, the DNR submitted requests for uh, for to to demonstrate that those counties are are in attainment. Um, I believe the the door one may have may the door in Manitowoc um, are either pending or, or or they might be in uh, final review final uh, rule the uh, final review of the final rule by the, by the uh, EPA. So that is I mean. That is encouraging. Um, Sheboygan County is not uh, it's not so lucky in terms of uh, being able to su submit a revised request to the uh, to the EPA. And then again, finally, finally, Sheboygan County um, moving the uh, um, moving the line west of 
um, west of I of I forty three, and and again I want I want to emphasize you know there's a lot of people and a lot of businesses, uh, and, and so it looks it looks like a really small move, but I think everybody in this room knows there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot more people in the eastern half of the county than than the western half of uh, of, of Sheboygan County, so it, so it's it's a significant impact. So, so what happened after, so again, the EPA did this, no opportunity for comment, done, it happened, uh, too bad, so sad uh, for those that are, that are stuck with the new non-attainment areas. I do want to note that uh, on August 13th of last year, the DNR filed a petition for reconsideration with the EPA um, on narrow grounds, and then uh, they noted the following one, as, as I mentioned, there was no opportunity for public comment, the EPA just did this, boom, done. And then uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this quote, and then EPA's action does not address the primary causes of Wisconsin's ozone non-attainment, which has repeatedly been demonstrated to be driven by out-of-state uh, emission. And, and this is, again, this is a claim being made by our current, by our current uh, DNR. This was signed by uh, the former Deputy Secretary, uh, Todd, uh, Todd Ames. Um, right, he, he, has sin he has since retired, but... Uh, was signed by, uh, by, by the current DNR. And then again, expanding Wisconsin's non-attainment areas will have little to no impact on air quality and only serves to create, uh, to create regulatory uncertainty. So that, I, I think that's kind of something that the, uh, that the petition got right. Um, an area of concern with the petition is that it really focused uh, too much of its concerns with Door County's revised boundaries. Um, it talked about how Door County was in kind of an awkward spot and where did you come up with the, with the issues for Door County? And I agree, <laughs> they, uh, they got it wrong with Door County, but they also got it wrong with the rest of the state too, <laughs> yeah, uh, including Sheboygan County. So it would have been nice when the, when the DNR made this, uh, uh, made this petition that they had actually said, well, you got it wrong in Door County, you got it wrong in uh, Racine County, you got it wrong in Sheboygan County. And you got it wrong in uh, in, in southeast in the rest of southeast Wisconsin uh, a, as well. But um, this was filed. It was acknowledged by the. Uh, uh, but when I say the EPA has not responded, they they have acknowledged receipt of the petition. Um, they have not otherwise uh, uh, responded to it, and uh, we we don't know if and when uh, the DNR will get a, a better response. Um, I will note uh, yesterday we had a meeting of the uh, air Ma management study group that I that I mentioned earlier, and I asked the uh, air program uh, head, "Hey, have you gotten a response to your petition yet?" And the answer was no, uh, not a, and uh, not any additional um, uh, follow up on on that uh, uh, at, at this time. So um, certainly uh, certainly some uh, some unfortunate uh, developments there. Where am I at here? Hey, why does it matter? <laughs> um, so, so again, um, EPA has dramatically expanded areas in eastern Wisconsin that are subject to burdensome ozone. And then again, since out-of-state emissions contribute so heavily to the non-attainment designations, Wisconsin businesses and consumers are largely at the mercy uh, of actions of out-of-state actors in lowering their emissions. And uh, many of you know this already, but I'll, but I'll reiterate it. Um, according to modeling uh, analyzed by the DNR, only 12% of the emissions uh, measured at the Kohler Andre Monitor are actually from Wisconsin sources. So Sheboygan County businesses and consumers have very little ability to actually control uh, the, their, own, their own emissions. We have, there's a standard up, up here in Sheboygan County and in other parts, parts of the state that have been imposed by the EPA that um, businesses and consumers are largely at the mercy of, of, uh, of other states and to some extent even other countries in terms of how to get of how to get those uh, um, those emissions reduced and get back into uh, uh, get back into attainment of those standards and I just wanted I wanted to highlight this this is something that was uh, put to, this is uh, directly sourced from the uh, Department of Natural Resources um, again some of you may have uh, may have seen this uh, before, um, but this looks at uh, um, using modeling the contribution towards uh, air emissions measure for ozone at the uh, Kohler Andre monitor. You'll note the biggest contributor as of 2017 was, was Illinois. 
Um, the uh, um, ICBC, I, I believe, is is just a is just another term for uh, um, uh, out of state or out of country. It's it's, cer it's certainly not uh, it's certainly not Wisconsin. You'll see Wisconsin's third, Indiana, um, Central. I think is a, is a consortium of different states. Um, this looked at everything uh, up to one percent of uh, contribution of emissions at the measure of the Kohler Andre monitor, and you'll note that last one, other again, that's just that's that's just different there. So that was that's what the their model looked at in 2017, 2023, much the same story. Looks like Wisconsin uh, looks like Wisconsin jumps from 12 all the way to 13 percent, perhaps um, still. You know, and again, that's Wisconsin. That's not just that's not just Sheboygan County. Um, again, Illinois being the biggest contributor, going down to Indiana. You know, again, this monitor is is measuring emissions from you know Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, Gary, Gary Indiana, um, and it's really it's not an accurate uh, uh, reflection of the of uh, what's being generated locally, um, nor is it a, an accurate reflection of uh, the air of uh, the air quality in uh, Sheboygan County. But that's a projection. It's not just having contribution in 2023. It, it, it is a projection, yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, yes, that, that yes, th this is modeling. The, yeah, we, we don't know, we can't look, or I don't know. <laughs> you, you can't, you can't, uh, um, I don't think you can actually take take a, or maybe you can. Scientists do crazy things. I mean, take a particle of air and say, yeah, this one's from you know Indiana. This one's this one's from uh, uh, this this one's from Chicago. But yes, you are 100 percent right. This is uh, th that that is a projection based on uh, based based on modeling that was analyzed by the uh, um, by the Department of Natural Resources. Oh, and I was asked to repeat the qu the, the question was to confirm it was a projection. And and yes, it it, it is in fact a um, a projection. So. Any other any other questions points on on Mike? Go ahead. I do not. I will. Say, the the question was: Does this inventory in twenty twenty three? Uh, the, does the modeling exclude the edge the Edgewater generating station, which, as I mentioned earlier? Is uh um is, is scheduled to uh be retired at at uh at the end at the end of this year, and so does that does that modeling account for that? That I don't know. This was pulled from the DNR's uh, application to the uh, to the EPA in 2020 uh, in February of 2020 um, to redesignate. Sheboygan County inland as being, sorry, Sheboygan County shoreline as being in uh, attainment of the 2008 standards. This is from a, this is from a, sorry, so long story short, this is from a 2020 document, uh, per early 2020 document produced by the, by the, uh, the EPA. Um, I don't, yeah, the, the short, the shorter answer is I don't know, but I'd be happy to, happy to follow up with you um, on that, but that, that's, that's a really good question. Um, any other, yeah, go ahead. So the, the the question is, given given how little or not at all uh, Sheboygan County businesses can actually uh, reduce reduce their own uh, their own uh, their own emissions, why hasn't the uh, the state taken taken actual uh, legal action against uh, um, against Illinois or or um, or against against the EPA? Um, you know that's. That that I think that's that's a that's a valid question. Um, I will note in conversations I ha I've had, there's always a there is a reluctance. You know, there's there is something in the EPA called the uh, the good neighbor um, provision, which uh, which which is basically like um, 
you can uh, you can file a petition with with the EPA saying that your neighbor has uh, in this case Illinois or or perhaps Indiana is not fulfilling their obligations under the Clean Air Act. Um, traditionally, it's my understanding that traditionally states have been reluctant to take that action because you accuse your neighbor of something, your neighbor starts accusing uh, accusing you of something, and it kind of it kind of goes it kind of goes down a uh, um, a, a, a rabbit a rabbit hole. Yes. <laughs> yes, they were. Yes, they were party. So that that could be that would be a that could certainly be a counter ar argument. Um, I don't believe they. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to say for certain. But but yet yeah, to your point, yes. Uh, the, the question was, didn't did Illinois sue? And yes, Illinois was was one of the folks that uh, that sued along with uh, Clean Wisconsin and, and the city of Chicago. And again, those those lawsuits were uh, uh, were consolidated. Um, I'm, I'm I'm still I'm still thinking. Uh, I'm just thinking a second on. Uh, um, I, I, know, I, I mean, it, 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 is a, it is a valid question. Um, you know, the, I, I guess, uh, and I, you know, I, I, will, I will say this, I, I, have asked, I have asked the DNR um, uh, air management folks, hey, is, is there any consideration over, over legal action by, by DOJ? And uh, I was not, I was given a non, I was given a non-answer. Um, I was told it was, you know, uh, it was a legal matter matter, and they could not uh, could not comment on that. But I mean, it, it's I think it's I think it's a fair question. Um, and, but I'm not I'm not an attorney. I'm not gonna you know uh, discuss the whether or not it's it's the perfect uh, legal strategy. But I will I you know obviously there's consequences anytime you, anytime you uh, um, anytime anytime you seek a you seek a lawsuit. So. Um, so what is WM? Well, we're educating the public for. <laughs> so the uh, the the, qu the question is uh, the the question is what is uh, what is what is WMC doing? Um, we we've certainly we've certainly have not been shy on, on pushing the uh, pushing the DNR in terms of uh, um, in terms of air emission re uh, regulations, not ju not just in relation to to ozone, but but uh, but other but other issues uh, but but other issues as well. Um, I, I mean, it's, it, I, I, again, uh, I just say it's, it, yeah, I, obviously it's, a um, it's, it's a very, it's a very challenging issue. Um, I guess I'd say, um, be happy to chat, to chat further, further with you, uh, uh, afterward, or I can, um, I can bring it up, uh, uh, I can bring it up to uh, superiors in, in terms of your your question on addition, but but cer but certainly we're but certainly we're continuing to push uh, um, push the DNR. We're continuing um, and continuing to uh, provide comment when, when we're permitted to and uh, work to fight back on uh, on these standards because yes, they they are incredibly problematic over here and then uh, here and then there. <laughs> Group, and that launched us into the 
project that got the Haven Monitor. We were able to generate data that showed that this area was in attainment. Again, we could shut down everybody to the south and it wouldn't make a difference. We'd still have ozone hooked up and we'd still be in non-attainment. The only way we're going to get out of the situation is if we just build a bunch of fans north of here and blow everything back. All right, Deidre, I'm going to try to summarize. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Uh, no, I, 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 first of all, that, that, that comments uh, very well. To, yes, this is, you know, it's really unfortunate that Sheboygan County businesses are, are, suffer, are suffering due to, uh, um, due to emissions from, uh, um, from other states. And uh, to your point, it, it, is, it, is very, it is very frustrating when you've got businesses and manufacturers that are meeting a myriad of, of requirements, and yet, and yet we're still being told by the, by the EPA, no you're, not, no, you're not doing it right. No, you're not doing it enough. No, you, you've got to face these, uh, these ozone non-attainment non regulations. When again, this this is as again this this shows this DNR modeling shows that this is an issue that that is uh, that is generated by this is this is an issue created by uh, forces that be by emissions from from out from outside Wisconsin, um, and, and I do I do have a couple I do have a couple slides on on uh, on potential next uh, steps. So I, I think what I'm if you don't mind I can I know there's one other hand raised but I'll I'll, uh, um, I'll, I'll keep going, I'll try to finish out uh, part of this section and then, uh, um, but for, but, uh, and then we can talk a little bit more about potential next steps or next, or next challenges, but I know there was one other hand raised in the, in the back. Go ahead. Or, oh, I, uh, I thought, sorry, I, I didn't see you. Uh, her, she wanted to go and then, and then do you. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, go ahead. I know very little about this topic, but I did read your EPA report, and and it gave all the uh, information on what studies were needed for uh, to be to create the new determination. And one thing that that was fascinating to me was your report of the graph. Okay. The uh, the 
the first point was in regards to uh, um, concern over over Sheboygan generated emissions, and then the question was, does it impact does this impact all Sheboygan businesses, or is it, or is it just a, a, a narrow uh, a narrow subset? <coughs> um, the 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 businesses that would be more most directly impacted would be those with with an air permit. So if you need if you need to uh, um, so if the business needs to needs to expand, then they they essentially have to find a uh, you know emissions reduction credit from from elsewhere in order to uh, um, in order to do that. And obviously that's a significant regulatory hurdle um, for, uh, for for businesses. And I, I do want to talk about an. So when I say, so when I talk about that, I do want to mention an example, and I've got that next. And then I know you mentioned concerns about uh, em emissions measured in uh, Sheboygan County, and I do have a slide on that, so I'll get I'll get to that in a in a moment if you don't mind. So um, I'm gonna continue on here, um, if I if I may, and then is, is it Chris? Yeah, Chris. Yeah. So uh, I'll uh, I'll let Chris kind of jump in. Uh, uh, towards uh, um, towards the end here, and uh, can can uh, can provide a federal update, which uh, which is uh, certainly appreciated. So, um, so uh, so again, talked about talking about the uh, um, where was it? Yeah, we're talking about the monitor. <laughs> um, so again, so so why so why does it matter? So um, so last month, as many of you probably saw. Uh, Intel uh, announced plans to to build a massive uh, chip manufacturing complex uh, near Columbus, Ohio. Um, Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin, may have actually been Intel's uh, second choice, and this was according to an article by uh, the Milwaukee by the Milwaukee Business News. And again, according to that, uh, and that this again would have would have been a huge project, uh, looking at a twenty eight billion dollar capital investment. 3,000 jobs, uh, average annual salary of $100,000. Um, again, according to the same, to the, uh, obviously that's, that's, uh, that's not nothing. Um, according to the same article, uh, the state and local incentives were, uh, were not the issue. However, and again, I'll, I'll quote, uh, officials say Intel appeared satisfied with their incentive package. One concern that they, they say that the company did raise was uncertainty over the ability to obtain air credits in the future for its anticipated expansion. Racine County lies within the EPA air pollution non-attainment zone. The Columbus, Ohio area, including the site chosen by Intel, is considered to be in attainment. So that's that's one, and again, do, do we know? No, we, no, we don't know. I mean, this, this is based on interviews with uh, 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 Tim Sheehy with uh, MMAC and and uh, and all, as well as local uh, economic development folks in uh, uh, in Racine County. So so we don't know we we don't know for sure. But I will go, I will go back to this slide right here again. Uh, Racine County under the 2018 final boundaries was not was was in attainment of the 2015 standard. They turn they turn around the 2021 boundaries. You can see right you can see right there in, in the blue. They are back they are back in non-attainment, and that may have been a that may have been a key factor in uh, um, in Intel not not siting in Wisconsin. And this is something um, again that uh, th this did come up at the uh, the the Intel article did come up at the Air Management Study Group yesterday. And this was something that the air program had uh, said could have. Um, she didn't say did, but she said could have played a factor in terms of uh, getting emissions credits and uh, the the attainment status of uh, of Racine County. So I, I think so. That's obviously uh, you know in terms of examples, that's a big one. <laughs> but I mean that I think it, I think it gives an idea in terms of what what the consequences. To a attainment versus a non-attainment uh, designation can uh, can be for uh, uh, for a county. I just looked at my watch and I'm behind. <laughs> uh, so so uh, so I'm gonna so I did want I did want to look at look at this. Um, so this is again this is straight from a DNR uh, 
DNR document, uh, Ozone Design Valley in Sheboygan County, and there are three lines there. Uh, the red line is, Sheboy is Sheboygan Color Andre measurements. The blue line is Sheboygan Haven. You can see it's much shorter because it's, because it's, uh, it's more recently installed. And then uh, um, the, uh, the dotted line there is uh, um, the, uh, the ozone, you know, is the uh, relevant ozone standards. And the reason I wanted to highlight this uh, to, to, the, to the question earlier, you can see a gradual, not a fast, <laughs> By any stretch of the imagination, but you can see a gradual decline in the uh, um, historically, at least, in the uh, in the ozone measured in, in Sheboygan County, and this is consistent with uh, uh, with statewide. You know, um, the you can go online and take a look at the DNR's latest air quality report. Uh, Wisconsin is cleaner air than we than we ever have before, um, and that and that report's readily readily available if anyone wants wants a copy. Uh, Feel free, happy. To, I'm I'm happy to send it. Um, and then uh, um, looking ahead, uh, again, an initial look at uh, the. Um, so this is a look back, looking ahead, uh, 2022 ozone. This is the cause for concern. So if you see the if you see the bottom line there, um, the uh, the measure the measurements uh, as of December 31, 2021. 2021 was not as good of a year for, for ozone, ozone measurements. And then the estimated 2022 critical values, you'll see where it says 2015 standard, you'll see 64. So that means the critical, that means the value measured, um, the critical zone value measured next year would have to be 64 in order for Sheboygan County to, to be able to apply next year to uh, get a, uh, um, an to uh, to be in attainment of the 2015 standard, so that is that is absolutely a challenge. Uh, um, that's it, it's an it, it's an ongoing challenge facing Sheboygan County. There's there's uh, there's no way around it. And then my uh, my last my uh, yes my last slide here. Um, you know again based on current data, Sheboygan County appears unlikely to to reach uh, attainment of, of 2015 standard this year. Um, and again, uh, and this is where Chris, if you wanna, if you wanna uh, talk for a second, but but again, we'll need to continue to monitor the reconsideration uh, petition, um, seek a redesignation request as soon as it falls before the necessary values, and then again, I, I want to point back, we do have a trending down line, so uh, you know, hope that 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 the line continues continues to uh, to trend uh, to trend downward. For, for next step, but um, I know, yeah, Chris, if you want to talk a little bit about what's going on at the congressional level. Yeah, I didn't, uh, Chris, can I ask, can you pull up the microphone? Just uh, make it easier. Sure. Okay, I didn't know I was going to be in the hot seat no, today. That's but. All right. Hi, everyone. Hey, uh, Chris from Congressman Grothman's office. Um, Congressman's office is out of Fond du Lac, but obviously this is an issue that's been going on for more than 10 years. Um, but. I think there's a lot of positive things that have been done uh, to what WMC does. They provide a tremendous outlook and into our business community about what numbers in real time are coming out. Uh, WMC can't launch the lawsuit themselves. This is an intergovernmental thing that gets pretty complicated with the state, federal, local level. Um, and another thing to be noted is that you know when, when we had the change of administration here, so when we saw the split of the designations from the shoreline to the inland, um, that was a very positive thing for a lot of our area and the county because uh, it was just that sliver and just that sliver that usually gets out of attainment. And this isn't all just because of uh, manufacturing or things like that. We saw a lot with the transport pollution. So Illinois, Indiana, and there's a lot of other areas uh, kind of polluting. So as far as the lawsuit level, the lawsuit level is kind of a last ditch effort. You know, that would be you know, heavily onto the state of Wisconsin and probably burden uh, the state quite a bit. However, you know, if we could look at it from an administrative point of view, when we look at uh, the Haven Monitor and the Kohler Andre Monitor, um, if you went back to that slide that so it shows, you know, in our Haven Monitor, in the Haven Monitor, we were actually under attainment of where we would need to be for the 2015 standard, which is fantastic. Um, now, when we took in the Kohler Andre out into the shoreline a bit, 
um, that's where we're paying too high. So, and I believe when we look back at where those monitors and the placement of those monitors, I believe that was Governor Doyle that placed that, that monitor out into the lake. So uh, when we talk about trans... Okay, so EPA, but then the state could select where they wanted to take the reading from. And I believe that's where the Kohler Andre was selected. So, because we deal a lot with, uh, you know, with EPA in insofar as if we could read that Haven monitor. However, if we need to come into compliance, we have to have solid readings uh, for a handful of years in attainment before we can select to move the monitor. So, even with that, if we could get that administrative change, uh, you, could, you saw from our chart that we'd be good to go. Uh, another interesting thing that has happened with the 2015 standard is you saw now more of the shoreline. This used to be just specifically a Sheboygan County uh, problem. Now, when we look up to it, uh, you know, if we look from Door, Brown, uh, you know, all the way down that lake shore, um, this is now spread uh, to the point where, it, and I, I always point to Door County as like, look, this is, you know, Sheboygan County and a lot of that lake shore and paper mills, everything, we have a lot of manufacturing. Door County doesn't have anything but you know Illinois traffic you know and then the naturally occurring ozone that the lake produces so if you've got monitors up there that are saying they're out of attainment and too high now this becomes you know I think this in our aspect strengthens our case to show look this is transport pollution this is you know this is naturally occurring ozone you know the the, the ozone that occurs you know to, with weather patterns on the lake um, you know so again we're it's it's known that shutting down all our manufacturing um, again, wouldn't put us into compliance insofar as the meters are read. Um, so I think, um, you know, when we had the changeover administration too, um, it, it is worth noting that this wasn't, you know, the, the split happening, you know, shoreline and inland was not some uh, Trump administration thing to shred the documents and say, hey, we're going to be in compliance because this is all good. These are career EPA folks for Region 5 that know and are very well versed in the areas and what, what we need. Um, and what we and the specific situation we have, I think the only other, you know, other than Sheboygan County, there was only one county in the country that even got close to the issues we have, and that was down in Texas. Um, so this is very, very unique to our, uh, to our region and to our like and to the United States as a whole. So, again, one of the reasons they don't want to necessarily change and just pass green light. Okay, you're fine even though I think there are a huge amount of career people at EPA that would, would love to do that for Sheboygan County, is because it would then, now with the new standards and the 2015 standards coming to play, um, as more and more regions are going to have trouble with it, uh, they're, they're not going to, you know, just rip it out for the books just for us, even as much as they want to. So I think there are a lot of administrative fixes that uh, still can occur, um, because I, I think Again, our business community, you guys are in the right. You guys are doing the right things, you know, as, as much as and painstaking as it is um, to keep going through this. But I, I think that uh, there's a lot of positive things that have been made, and that's to efforts like WMC, you know, federal, state, DNR, um, all doing a tremendous job. So um, I think, like anything, uh, th this is a big, you know, the federal government itself is, you know, that big barge. Um, and then you know, to get that barge to turn is very difficult to do, uh, but uh, th this has been very, like a long ongoing process, but I think we're making a lot of uh, positive steps. And if, I should note, if anybody, you know, specifically to your businesses or business communities and, you know, with some of the monitors, we do have strength in the fact that he said that, you know, we were, they didn't open, open common period for when they, uh, you know, the Biden administration this summer did not open it up for open common period uh, for when we wanted to adjust these boundaries. So I think we still have that on our side as well. While it doesn't help in the short term and everything, I think, you know, the momentum of where this is going, I think, is all positive. And uh, should, you know, you guys have any other questions or anything like that, you know, the Congressman Grothman's office is in Fond du Lac. You can ask for me. I've been working on this uh, issue quite a long time with uh, the Congressman and then uh, his predecessor, Mr. Petra, as well. So this has been going on a lot. But uh, I'd say during the last few years, we've seen a, a lot move in this space that has benefited the county and the region. So um, I don't know if there's other questions or have you heard?
They they threw out so the numbers the numbers they did not say were inaccurate. They didn't have enough showing the work of how they got to those numbers. Yeah, and they left a lot of stuff out. So that was it was basically it's, they didn't dispute where we ended up on those numbers. They disputed how we got there, and they said you got to take more time to show your work, which they worked through and did. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, that, and then and EPA does, and then, but the, I think, like, where we saw, they, they got to take the aggregate, and again, when we're talking, I mean, so some days will be high, some days will be low, it's the same thing with the water testing, where you see a beach closed one day for E. coli, and then the next day the beach is open and the E. coli is gone. Um, it's always a little, uh, you know, like, maybe I wouldn't go swimming the day after, but, like, uh, uh, so the same kind of thing is that, uh, you know, as a full, because it could be a cloudy day, there could be a clear sky day, there could be, you know, where the jet stream's coming from. All, I mean, so when we're trying to then, okay, so we'd say, you know, maybe it'd be a clear day, you know, cooler day for the summer, so that the ozone wouldn't be as bogged down. However, what if we got that south wind, um, you know, coming up, and there, then we're getting, you know, ozone brought up from the transport pollution from Gary, from, you know, Chicago. So again, I think uh, the strength isn't necessary. I think that the aggregate is a strength as far as naturally occurring, but then once we couple it with, you know, the good neighbor clause of, you know, well, someone can try to say, well, on that day, though, it was nice and it was a Friday, so a lot of people were driving up, you know, on 43 to come through. I mean, so we get into, again, we're, if we're taking, looking at the metadata, you know, it'd be great if we could say that, you know, 30% of it is natural, 30% of the ozone is naturally occurring during the summer. Can we take that number, that 30% number off our books so our average can come lower, um, even with our transport pollution that we're, you know, that we're good. And, you know, as we've seen, we're almost there to where, you know, everything being down. I think the border, the, where that border down that southern part of the county is going to be drawn is a big question mark. And um, I honestly don't know how much input they're looking for uh, for EPA uh, as far as open comment. I think that, again, a lot of the comments that have been made, uh, you know, have been gone to the same people over in the EPA office. But I think it's, it's great to, again, register those, register the thing. Um, because even that slight border adjustment would be good and beneficial for the county. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think once we start breaking it down into smaller aspects, we, we could start looking at a lot, and I don't know that the, the feds or state is willing to take that on, but I, we'll, again, we can bring that up, because that's a very good point. Well, I'm gonna wrap. <laughs> I, had a, uh, I, I had slides on, uh, on PFAS, but we, but we didn't get there. Uh, but I think we had a really great discussion on uh, on, on ozone uh, non-attainment, and, and uh, I think next time I come up, I'll have you guys all lecture me, and uh, <laughs> we can figure out more about this uh, very challenging, but but uh, but but very important topic. So, um, with that, you know, with that, I will stick around for a few minutes uh, if folks want to want to talk uh, 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 talk afterward. But I, I really appreciate everyone taking the time. And hang on, get to the end. There we go. And uh, uh, Wisconsin Business Front of the Environment, uh, our annual awards, uh, uh, coming spring 2022. So uh, please uh, don't, don't be afraid to nominate a business. So thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.